What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the first episode of season three of NFL Talk from Tinful Blast Entertainment. Of course, I am your boy, Big Sin. Sitting across country from me is the homie, Hollywood J. Black. How you doing, fam? Uh, you know how we do around this time, sir. I am doing great, doing excellent, doing swell. It is a, a nice, wonderful Saturday. Uh, we, finally, we are at home. The Niners and the Patriots both have a victory uh, in the preseason. So I think it's about that time that we finally get a chance to do our NFL preview show. This is year number three that we do this, by the way. Uh, always, always an excellent thing when we do this. Um, and oddly enough, I, we usually come out right about it. I mean, the two times last year, the last two times we both predicted that the Patriots were going to make the Super Bowl. Um, so um, by, now, by now, that's basically almost a guarantee until somebody else in the AFC decides to actually play football for a whole season. Well, and, and as you remember, that is exactly uh, – if, if a lot of, I've been telling these people on these shows over and over again, I said, until somebody proves to me that they can actually beat the New England Patriots in a, fo- in a Super Bowl, that, um, that I think that they're going to continue their dominance. Now, I understand that the Philadelphia Eagles won, but it took a last-minute play to stop that Tom Brady comeback. But just imagine if that play never had happened. We still be talking about the New England Patriots being two-time champs uh, back to back. Uh, they'd be going for their three-peat this year, uh, but you know things happen the way that they do. We can't control it. That's why we play the games, and sir, that is why we do this. We do this for the love of the game. We do this for the love of the people. We do this for the love of the fans, and we sure as hell do it because we love fucking football. Isn't that right, sir? Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. So. But that- Further ado, let's get started where we're going to start off. First, with the team we just talked about, the team that ends up waterboarding the rest of their division every single year for the last 17 years. (laughs) (laughs) My New England Patriots. That's right. Bruno says, change that hat. No, it's the only hat that matches my shirt, sir. It's not being changed. I'm sorry. It's the only hat that's clean. That matches my outfit. And, yeah, he said Ravens all the way. Don't worry. That's coming. NFC AFC North is coming out next week, sir. Don't you worry about that. This is the AFE time to shine, the New England Patriots time. that we got. The Ravens are the the geriatrics of the AFC North, so don't worry about them right now. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) It's funny because Michael Crafty is going to get his chain snatched again here in the preseason. Oh, Lord. Next week. He said, snatch him up. Snatch him up. So, All right, so let's talk about those New England Patriots. Key additions. They added Eric Decker. They drafted Sony Michelle. The running back from Cincinnati last year. What the fuck is his name? Um, Hill? They, they got Hill? Was it Hill? There's the running back from Cincinnati. Um, hold on. I think no, it, was no, no, it was Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard. Jer- Jeremy Hill. Jeremy Hill. So that he's added to that backfield with James White and Bolden. Yeah. Jeremy Hill and Sonny Michelle. Sonny Michelle had a minor knee injury, which he should be good to go by the regular season. They signed Eric Decker. They released Malcolm Mitchell. They released um, Rashard Matthews due to injuries. Yeah. They're, they're no- if, if you can't perform, you're not going to be on the team. Basically. Well, the notables, of course, is uh, Nate Solder, uh, who's their kick returner. Uh, Amendola, of course, you know. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just called Nate Solder a kick returner? Well, what was he? Oh, no, he was a guard, right? Oh, my bad. I'm he sorry. Was left tackle. Left tackle. My bad. He was on the offensive line. I got it. I got it, Bob. I got it. Hold on. I got it. Hold on. <laughs> I was thinking of the other Nate. There was another Nate that used to kick return. What about him. Nate Ebner? Probably. I don't know. So <laughs> – there, there's Debbie Amendola. He left during free agency. Deion Lewis to Malcolm Butler. But the Patriots were quick to re-up and fix that whole entire situation. Um, and then they got Eric Decker. They drafted Sony Michelle. Um, Edelman is going to be out for the first four games. But 
that's what happens. What happens when you have a elite quarterback? Sometimes things change. Remember, they were without Edelman for what part of the season? All, All season last year. Yeah. So Edelman being gone is not really changing anything. How the dynamic? It's just going to be business as usual for the so New it's England Patriots. Like, it's just like when Gronk was gone for the season. They went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You do nothing, change, nothing changes with this team. No. And as I say, big players do big time things in big time games. And that's exactly why they have Tom Brady. This team lives and dies with Tom Brady. So um, as long as they can protect Tom Brady, the Patriots are going to be right back in the Super Bowl. I don't really again, I don't see this how this is going any other way. Um, they're too well coached. The personnel is perfect for the schemes. They do what they're supposed to do. They're highly disciplined. Uh, they're they're knowledgeable in football. They do everything right. And I need you to tell the quote, even though that they won their preseason game against the Redskins, Phil, Phil what is that quote that Bill Belichick said uh, when he was asked by the media? I will tell the fans out there what he said. We played 37 seconds of good football. A whole 37 seconds of good football. And see, that tells you exactly what uh, Bill Belichick thinks of a victory. Uh, and so if he's unsatisfied with that, it tells you that even in blowouts, he's probably still unsatisfied. And that is why they pursue say, perfection. Let, let me just put this little thing out there. Preseason. I already see people posting on Facebook, oh, my team wanted to go to the Super Bowl, blah, 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 because we won a preseason game. Listen, both the Browns and the Lions in their past history have went 4-0 in the preseason. And after they did that, their final season standings were 0-16. Yeah, yeah. Preseason means dick. Exactly, exactly. Break it down for a second. I'm going to grab my pair of headphones real quick. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. But let them know about the uh, – the Patriots, because we're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about some notable games before we, we before we go on. But I'm gonna grab my headphones. Give me about one minute. All right. Well, in addition to Eric Decker and what they have added on offense, they also added De um, Jason McCourty, Devin McCourty's twin brother for the backfield. That will help out a lot. We also added some depth of linebacker and line defensive lineman. We still got to worry about the pass rush. Um, hopefully, Malcolm Brown will be healthy all season. And De Dedrick Wise Jr. can step up off of his rookie year. Um, the defensive line is good, but we lost Matt Patricia, so we'll see how that defense goes this year without Big Matty. Best of luck to him over in Detroit. Um, like I said, they waterboard – the AFC East every year. There's no way in hell the Jets or Buffalo or even the fucking Miami Gay Sharks are built to take this division from New England. And with that being said, there's nobody to blame for the Patriots' dominance but the other teams in the AFC East because they choose not to get better. They choose to be subpar. Um... Last year, you know, Jacksonville made excuses after getting beat by New England in the playoffs. But then they talk about that the excuses that this not they didn't play good enough to beat the Patriots, and that is true. In order to beat the Patriots, you need to play almost a perfect game or hope that Tom Brady has a very lackluster performance for what they're trying to do. Um the loss of Malcolm Butler hurts, but Jason McCourty, Jason McCourty is good. He's not maybe as good as Malcolm Butler, but him and Devin should have a special bond in that backfield, you know, the whole twin thing and all. 20. Also, what? I said twinning. Twinning. He also, also brought in Eddie Pleasant and guard Nate Seeker and released Cody Hollister. The Hollister brothers have been okay. Cody was the weaker of the two, so they kept the other one. We'll see how that goes there. Um, Sony Michelle, like I said, he has the injury. He should be okay. 
Let's see what else. Um, oh, yes, they also signed Isaiah Wynn. Isaiah Wynn is a rookie guard from Georgia who, when Sony Michelle's on the field, I guarantee you this man will be on the field. Since he blocked for Sony for two years at Georgia, he knows Sony's game. He knows his running style. Um, as Mr. Black right there gets his shit settled off. I'm working on it. Sorry. He's got the he's got the schedules on his end, so once he gets back, we'll say the normal matchups. But let me pull up some and see what I can read here. We have. All right, I gave up on my whole headphones thing because I can't find the cord. So, so the New England Patriots regular season, the first game will be the return of um that explosive quarterback in Houston. What's his name, Mr. Black? Oh, you're talking about Watson? Yep. All right. So this, so this is what I got as far as the, the big, big, big deals on the schedule. The, because these are the games that they've been talking about. Uh, because they're, everybody's worried that the Patriots are going to go two and two in their first four games. And I'm just sat here like, ha, 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 ha. But on the real, so we have the Texans and the Jags in the first two games. Uh, in the first, well, in a, in, a, in at least two out of four games, and then we have the Packers, the Titans, and the Vikings. Now, the other notable game that I like to mention is the Week 17 game versus the Jets. Not the first game because I don't think that's going to matter. I think the the Jets are going to get stomped out in their first game, uh, but it's a notable game because by that time you're going to know exactly if the Jets are a good team or a shit team, and if they're a team on the bubble. That means they're more than likely going to have to go through New England to get to the playoffs, and that's where that game is going to come in. Um, I think New, I think the Jets have the pieces, given the state of the uh, East, but that's another conversation altogether. You, you you missed one of the notable games that I have. Which one do you have? It is Matt Patricia's first time facing Bill Belichick from the opposite side of the field. Ah, yes. The Detroit yes. line, the New England Patriots at Detroit. Yeah, Patricia has never worked in a football scenario without Bill Belichick, which is going to provide a uh, a decent decent matchup. Hopefully, national televised matchup that's going to show showcase what one what uh, Patricia's learned, and two show that Bill Belichick only taught every, everything that Patricia knows, not everything that Belichick knows. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do know that any other coaches who leave Belichick, they all seem to fail. I hope that's not the case with Maddie Patricia because I really like him. But yeah. hey, it is what it is. It just sucks that he has to play in his first season out. He has to play New England. I tell you, uh, uh, um, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, I mean the Texans and Jags within the first two weeks. You got the Packers. The Titans is always that one game that's a weird game every time they play them, right? Because either they, they blow out the Titans. Well, the last, and here's the thing for the Titans. They got to hope that this this um streak ends because each time Marcus Mariota has played the Patriots, he ended up with a broken leg. Yeah. 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 So with that said, sir, I'm, I'm notating uh, – your record, as you say, because I want to keep a record of what you think their record is going to be. At the end of the season, I believe they will be 13 and 3. 13 and 3. All right. The, the most interesting game in the beginning of the season is that game at Jacksonville. Yeah. Because last year, the Jacksonville Jaguars came to New England to put up a fight, but just couldn't handle what New England was doing. Yeah. This I year, mean, sometimes- in that defense, they should be, it should be a much better game. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. I 100% agree on that. All right, so next on the list is going to be the Miami Football Dolphins. Now, is Ryan Tannehill to... back from injury yet? Who? Tannehill. Yeah, he's going to be back. He's back, actually. He's been in practice. He actually, I think he played some preseason ball uh, yesterday. Um, so some notable people that have gotten at it. Uh, we all know about Danny, Danny Amendola. Uh, Jeremy Langford, the uh, the second-year man that was on Chicago, uh, who was cut, uh, he ended up on 
um, the uh, the Dolphins. We have uh, Brock Osweiler serving as backup to Jay Cutler. They said if you're going to get Jay Cutler, let's just go to Osweiler. If we're going to have to stink it up all year, might as well do Jay it on the Cutler, cheap. Jay gonna... Cutler still there? No, he's gone. But as I said, they got another. They got another uh, Broncos quarterback, Brock Osweiler. So you, guess... you just you just said that he's backing up Jay Cutler. Jay no, no, I said, not... I said if you're going to get a backup like Jay Cutler, then oh. you might as well get it for cheap. And not for not cheap, motherfucker. <laughs> get it for the low and not for the high. Um, well, I told you. Remember last year, I went on a twenty-minute rant of things I trust more than Jay Cutler. We're gonna. And we're gonna we're... They're actually all true. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I think if he if he ends up unretired once again, we have to debut that at the beginning of the season. Uh, <laughs> things I we're gonna have that as a segment. Uh, every week, things I trust more than Jay Cutler. So I'm about to say, I'm about to say the same thing about Teddy Bridgewater's knee. Oh, <laughs> savage! So we have. So, so oddly enough, I found out that Frank Gore is on the Dolphins. I said, "What the fuck?" But it makes well, you sense. Know, because... guys like you know, old people like to retire in Miami. So, hey, he's a 49er. Great, okay. He. That's that. That's the exact word. Great. Yeah. That means he is old and gray now. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, hey, he still put up a thousand yards in Indianapolis. Oddly enough. So. Yeah, because all they did was run the ball because Andrew Luck was dead. The offensive line was garbage. Frank Gore had to do it all himself. Anyways, so they added Frank Gore. Brock Osweiler, uh, uh, Bryce Petty, Danny Amendola, and Jeremy Langford. Only who the fuck would sign Bryce Petty? What in the blue hell? Apparently, the Miami Dolphins did. I that don't question dude, these things, sir. That, that I mean, poor dude. He can only cycle around the AFC East bottom feeders. <laughs> he likes it on the East Coast. He says he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to leave. He, he likes being down low. That's what it is. Savage. So. Oddly enough, I mean, the the Dolphins gutted their defense when they got rid of uh, Robert Quinn, uh, or the D- Kong Sue, Mike Pouncey, and Lawrence Timmons gone. Um, and they, they have a bunch of young people that, that are in there. I don't know names, but I know they're young. They lost the most, but they did lose the most important person on their offense. Yeah, that's true. Jarvis Landry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's over in Cleveland right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that. I mean, that defense, I don't know. Like, to me, that defense was the only thing that was good about Miami, and then that's just gone. And so, they said, yeah, Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye. So, the uh, that's gonna be the, co- gonna be the coach at, at the Dolphins at the end of the season. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. So, we have, uh, of course, Tannehill coming back. Why do you still have New England Patriots on the red bar? Ah, uh, because who cares about the Miami Dolphins? No, I just I forgot to click the button. That's all I was saying. No, you're absolutely right. Who <laughs> gives a shit about them? <laughs> the Miami Guinea Sharks. So, so is is uh is is Tannehill going to make a big difference coming up? Tannehill is not going to make it through the season. Damn. <laughs> But what if he does? Is he going to make a difference in Miami? Saying what if he does would be like, what if Eric Rowan could carry a match by himself? Would he need Luke Harper? It would never happen. Damn. Ryan Tannehill is just a five-inch taller version of Tony Romo. But Tannehill can scramble. Because he used to be a linebacker. The reason he's not playing defense anymore is because he can't stay healthy. It's because he can't take a hit, let alone deliver one. <laughs> but he can throw a football. Barely. <laughs> not a strong arm. <laughs> but his accuracy is the same as Chad Pennington when he got tried to throw a fucking deep ball. Which is the exact reason why Jarvis Landry left. <laughs> anyway. My record for the Miami Dolphins this year. Five and eleven. Damn, you said five and eleven. All right, hold on. Five and eleven. All right, so uh, notable games this year. 
are both games against the Patriots, uh, the Jets, both games against the Jets, the Texans, the Packers, the Vikings, and the Jaguars. You know, I'm surprised in these notable games you're mentioning, you're not mentioning probably the toughest team other than the Patriots in the AFC, and that's Buffalo. No. And I'll get to why Buffalo in a second. And we'll, we'll talk about that. And when I get Isn't to Buffalo. Next? Isn't they next? No, the Jets are actually next. I say Buffalo for last for a particular reason. Um, oh, I, thought, I thought we tried to say dumpster fires for last. Well, essentially we have two dumpster fires in, the, in New York, and that's the Giants and the Jets. Oh, well, three, including the Bills. So, it's just something about you, girl. <laughs> but, th- but this is a happy dumpster fire. So, the Jets have the notable additions. Uh, they've uh, drafted change Sam Darnold. Change the name. No. Okay. All right. So, they've. <laughs> I'm going to take 20 minutes to put up these tabs. I'm not even going to use them. <laughs> so they drafted Sam Darnold, as, as everybody know. Uh, they drafted, well, they traded for Teddy Bridgewater, or he signed him as a free agent, whatever. I don't know. Josh McCown is somehow still alive. Uh, and and they also got Terrell Pryor out of free agency as well. Josh McCown is the Ric Flair of the NFL without the championships. I will never retire. Woo! He has a 19-year career. Did you know that? I'm surprised. Yeah. That Bill Belichick doesn't respect this man enough to put him as a backup on the Patriots just to simply give this man the Super Bowl ring that he solely deserves. No, he tried that experiment with Vinny Testaverde. It didn't work, so he said, fuck it, I'm not doing it again. I thought it did work. Didn't he get a Super Bowl ring? No, Flutie did. Not Testaverde. Flutie got the ring. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Oh, well. Because only one of those two deserved a a Super Bowl ring. That was Flutie. Anyways, because he got screwed so much. Anyways... So, um, the the Jets didn't really have anybody notable that they lost simply because they didn't have any notable players on their team to begin with. So, <laughs> yeah, they lost the, be- the best defensive linebacker to the Patriots last year. Yeah, yeah. Like like do or die used to say, you can't miss what you never had, <laughs> which was good players. But you know, their best wide receiver last year was Brandon Marshall. And we see how bad that is everywhere else. And, and their second be- best wide receiver was Jeremy Curley. He used to be on the 49ers. Remember? He's the one that apparently only Colin Kaepernick had chemistry with the uh, the one year that they, that, the, the, uh, year that they played. So <laughs> I like that country boy, Jeremy Curley. That's a man that should be on the New England Patriots. That, that's a man's man right there. Jeremy fucking Curley. Um, well, he's only 5'8". Which is what the Patriots like, but you know what the problem is? What? He's black. That's not racist at all. No, 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 no. Let me let me <laughs> put some context into that one, okay? Okay. If you notice, any receiver on the Patriots who is under six feet tall is white when they get traded or kicked off the team. It it also doesn't help Jeremy Curley's top heavy, right? Because remember, he's like five foot eight. But the dude is like 220 pounds. Nigga out there looking like um uh oh what's that what's that linebacker's name? There was a 5'8 or 5'9 linebacker who was like 230 all muscle. He was top heavy. I can't remember his name. It'll come to me. But that's who Jeremy Curley reminds me of. It's just a big how are you gonna be a big body slot receiver? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the question I got. How the hell are you gonna be a big body slot receiver? You can't. It, it doesn't. The mathematics. I've already done the math. You know me. I like numbers. It, it doesn't add up. So, <laughs> so he, can't, he so, can't lean too far ahead because he starts to stumble. Yep. Bloop. Uh, so the notable games in, in the uh, in, in the Jets land are the Lions, the Jags, the Broncos, the Patriots, the Texans, the Packers, the Bills, and the Dolphins. Um, you know what I'm going to give the Jets this year? What? I'm going to give them a little ray of hope. Okay. I say they're going to go 6 and 10. 6 and 10. All right. We got you down. They're going to beat the Patriots in week 17. All right. We got you down for 6 and 10. You you think they're going to beat the Patriots in week 17? Is it only because the Patriots are going to be resting their starters? 
because by then the Patriots will already have a first round bye locked up, and Tom Brady's only going to play the first half. They're going to they're going to be fifteen and zero, right? That would. Just... <laughs> I think 13 and 3. The third loss would be that Jets game. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. All right. So last but not least, probably. I'm gonna get my hand, I'm gonna get my hands warm over this dumpster real quick. Hold on. All right. Is the for those, the podcast, for those listening on the podcast, I am rubbing my hands and putting them over a dumpster fire. So fuck you that you can't see me, okay? <laughs> so the uh, the Buffalo Bills, um, are are are, are dumpster fire. Are you a pirate? Uh, arr, 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 arr. Yeah, arr, exactly. That's all. I I stuttered so much because I couldn't even find a decent description for him. It's a shame. So, but let's let's talk about their quarterback, their bridge quarterback, AJ McCarron. Finally got out of Cincinnati and went to Buffalo, which was fine until they drafted Josh Allen. Yeah, so, we want you to be our quarterback. Fifteen-year-old Josh Allen. Fifteen-year-old Josh Allen is a racist. <laughs> it's like we we draft uh, AJ McCarron. Come on, you're going to be our future, but we have our future future. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like the Outcast song. You know, the, on the Oak Tree, you feel like this forever, 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 ever, forever, ever, 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 so notable draft, another notable draft pick. I didn't even realize this, but Austin Prohl, son of a uh, uh, former Cardinals uh, famous wide receiver Ricky Prohl. Everybody he knows Ricky Prohl. From- and he did the Cardinals, but okay. I mean, yes, I know, but he did also more on the on Tecmo Super Bowl than he did in real life. But anyways, that's another statement for another day. Uh, I, almost, I almost took the Cleveland Browns to the Super Bowl last year in a video game. That. So you, you do realize the Browns and Baker Mayfield won my two Twitter polls. So that's who I got to take to the Super Bowl in Madden 19 are the Browns led by Baker Mayfield. Oh, Lord. That's that's going to be fun. Have fun with all of that. The <laughs> whole thing. Have fun with the whole thing, sir. Um, the the Bills somehow also convinced Vontae Davis and Chris Ivory to come over there as well. Um, well, when you have Shady McCoy, you kind of need Chris Ivory because Shady McCoy, much like the Ryan Tannehill, can't stay on the field a whole season. Oft injured. And the man is getting paid more than Le'Veon Bell, who's played more games than Shady McCoy. But, you know, don't give Le- Le- Le'Veon Bell a contract. That's a conversation we're going to have next week, by the way. And um, also, also, did you notice the Madden curse is going to hit Antonio Brown with a vengeance this year? He's already been injured once. Oh, God. It's gonna hit him multiple injuries. Because remember, the Madden Curse couldn't get near TV twelve last year. Exactly. So it's coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> it's kind. It's kind of like when uh, what is that? What is it? Final Destination. <laughs> when it skips, when it skips, it goes back. Come back with a vengeance. It's, yep, it's skipped TV twelve. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what happened. So now, the Madden Curse went up to Tom Brady. Like, oh, never mind. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady and shit. Got to wipe dust off the shoulders. So the notable games for the uh, the Buffalo Bizzles are the Vikings, the Packers, the Texans, the Titans, the Pats, the Dolphins, the Jets, uh, and the Jags. Um, I say the Vikings uh, and the Packers because those are two road games. They're going up north uh for those games uh well they play up north every game at home so really don't I know that but not but the, that's the great white north this is like the greater white north right this is oh so they're the more they're more white out there than they are in buffalo exactly it fucking exactly um and then I don't it's funny the, the Jags are only gonna come up a lot inside some of my uh my notables and uh lay enough because it yeah, because the AFC, because the AFC West is playing the NFC East and the AFC East this year. Yep. Well, yeah, the AFC South is playing the NFC. Yeah. So it's that's what I meant. Yes, we know that's what you meant. So, Buffalo Bills, sir, what would I have you down for? You have me down as nine and seven in a wild card playoff first. Nine and seven again. Ooh. Yep. I have them. 
It's gonna be my first prediction. I'm, I I break down my predictions at the end, but this one I gotta give you now. I think the Buffalo Bills are gonna go five and eleven. I have five and eleven, and I'll tell you why. I don't think they're gonna beat the Packers. I don't think they're gonna beat the Texans. I don't think they're gonna beat the Titans. I don't think they're gonna beat the Pats twice. I don't even think they're gonna beat the Dolphins twice. And I really think they're only gonna beat one game in the Jets, and they're really not gonna beat the Jags. Okay. So, just letting you know. That's what friends are for. And I still have New York Jets. And we talked about the Buffalo Bills. Hey! So now, we're on to the NFC East. (laughs) (laughs) The beasts of the East. We already talked about the Patriots. Huh? We already talked about the Patriots. Well, it seems that the East, outside of a couple teams, about three teams are really, really bound for playoff team playoffs. So that's both NFC and AFC. Um, so the Eagles, the Super Bowl champs, uh, as begrudgingly as I like to say those three words, Eagles and Super Bowl champs, they are the Super Bowl champs. The uh, they only seem to have gotten better because uh, for some reason they've decided to sign Mike All Speed No Hands Wallace and. Uh, they've decided to add, uh, add uh, defensive stalwart Haloti Nagata while also getting rid of Brent Selick. That is interesting. Uh, Carson Palmer, no Carson Palmer, Carson Wentz is back. Uh, well, will be back uh, possibly in a few okay, days, well, weeks or whatever. I have a very bold prediction when you're done talking about the Eagles. Okay. Um, you want You want to go ahead now because... Uh, oh, sure. I can, right now. I can say what I want to say right now. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Just like the last, what, four or five NFC Super Bowl people, you know, contenders, the Philadelphia Eagles are not going to make the playoffs this year. You think so? You think so, sir? Tell me why. Is it because it's just the curse in itself? or No. Because the Giants are going to be better than they were because they actually have an offensive line now and they have a running back now. Odell Beckham is healthy. The okay. Dallas Cowboys are going to be the bottom feeders of that division. The Washington Redskins didn't lose when they lost Kirk Cousins because Alex Smith is the same fucking quarterback. So the Washington Redskins are going to be probably the one or two top teams win teams in that division. I, 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 can, I, can, I can dig that. Um, the only thing that I think the Redskins, the only problem that I foresee the Redskins are going to have is if uh, Nick Foles starts this season. Carson, Carson Wentz doesn't start this season. Nick Foles starts this season. And he does fairly well. You're going to have yourselves a quarterback controversy. Because... Carson Wentz is the is literally the guy that brought him to the dance, um, and well, along with that defense. So, do we discount what Carson Wentz did and keep him on the bench and keep playing uh, uh, Nick Foles until the wheels of, uh, fall off of him, or do you mix mix miss screwing up chemistry, put up Carson Wentz? What if what if the Eagles go? Let's say they go seven and zero, right, and say. Carson Wentz is ready, finally ready to get back into the scheme of things. And then all of a sudden they end up losing the playoff, the end about the playoff picture because of Carson Wentz. That could very well happen. It, it's going to be a quarterback controversy. I don't think that it's a question of if, more so if it's a question of when. And if it does happen, and when it happens, I think that's what's going to cost them that Eagles. Uh, that playoff berth, as we as you just got done discussing. Last year, the Eagles caught lightning in a bottle. Nobody yeah. expected them to do what they did. Nobody. Yeah. They expected the Cowboys and the Giants to be fighting over that division. The Eagles are not going to surprise anybody this year. Nick Foles is not going to surprise anybody this year. Fuck, two years ago, Nick Foles was damn near retired. Yeah. But, There's not going to be no surprises when it comes to this team this year. But yeah, it, may, it might be. 
I might be wrong. They could win 13 games. You never know. But my prediction for the Philadelphia Eagles this year is a 7-9 and nine record. I'm going to see you two games on that. Uh, you, you say 7-9. and nine. I say 9-7. and seven, But I still think because of that, they still don't make the playoffs either way. So we're I both in agreement on that one. Yeah. I think, I think something's going to happen, and I told you it's going to be with that quarterback position that's going to blow this whole thing up. And then they're going to have to make some decisions on who they're going to have to commit to. Um, They'll commit to Carson Wentz because Nick Foles has never been the most consistent guy after having a good season. But the question is when. And that's what I said. It's not a question of if it's going to happen. It's well, a win. I know. Um, and that's the thing. I think that if Nick Foles starts losing games, then yes, we'll go with Carson Wentz. Or if they throw him just into the mix, they might end up losing because of chemistry. That's the one thing that I worry about, and the whole chemistry thing. Because remember, chemistry has cost some good teams some good runs, not not just not just like that year, but like years continuously of of, of runs. Remember uh, Drew Brees, right? Um, he finally hit lightning in a bottle in uh, San Diego. Got hurt. They didn't believe him anymore. They drafted Philip Rivers. Off uh, Drew Brees goes to the, the, the Saints, and the rest is history, right? Montana and Young. Montana gets injured. Young, they have that bad year that, that, that this happens. And then and then the year after that, I mean, even though they made the playoffs, it wasn't a consistent year. And then finally they hit lightning in the ball, as you said, that year in 1994 when they bought all those players. And I hate when people say it, but it's true. They, they bought those players. It took two years to recover from Montana. Yeah. You know, so quarterbacking is a big deal, which is why – more so the like the Patriots, for example, um, and uh, the Ravens and teams like the Falcons and the Saints, they and even the Panthers value that position so much that they would even degrade what they have as a simple quarterback, a person at quarterback, to make sure that there's no controversy in the quarterback position. That's what the Eagles are going to have to worry about because it's not like Nick Foles is a slouch. He's been to the playoffs before, it's, you know, and, and he's just. He's him, Nick Foles holds the NFL record for highest completion percentage in the season. Yeah. So is it? But it, yeah, I was just saying it's just gonna what, what it comes down to. I still think nine and seven. You say seven and nine, but they're not gonna make the playoffs. I think me and you can agree upon that, right? Yep. All right. So the notable games. I think that I, I didn't get to mention the notable games, but the Falcons' first game of the season, Thursday night football. Uh, then we have the, the Jags all- two weeks after that. Um, Vikings, Rams, and Redskins. They have a tough schedule. They have a tough one. I, th- I think them and the Jaguars have the two toughest schedules in the NFL this year. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the, the, that in a couple weeks with the Jaguars. The Jaguars got a hellacious fucking schedule. All right. So now let's get on to what, one of my favorite stories, the, the, the Washington Redskins. Remember last year, me and you had the, the discussion. Uh, we talked about uh, Kirk Cousins, right? We talked about the lack of them getting a contract. And we asked why they were so adamant about not getting getting him a contract. And we said that there's going to be a free agent along the way that Washington's going to like more than Kirk Cousins. Well, that ended up... just happened to be the same type of quarterback. Yeah. (laughs) But they like him more, and they trust him more, um, because... they. Hold on, I'm I'm doing hand signals. Some of the drink, please. Um, hey, what are we talking about? The Redskins signed Alex Smith. Yep. Talk Red about off. break that down for a second. I gotta get some water real quick. Um, Alex Smith is potentially the same type of quarterback as Kirk Cousins. He has more semi big game experience than Kirk does. He doesn't have as strong as an arm as Kirk, and he won't take the risky throws like Mr. Cousins would. But what you will get from Alex Smith is a guy who's quick on his feet and a guy who makes good decisions. He does not turn the ball over. But like Mr. Foles in Philadelphia, when he starts turning the ball over, he turns it all over in bunches. Uh, I like Alex Smith. Um, I have since he was a 49er. He just fell into a bad situation there with Kaepernick, and then they let him go to Kansas City. And if anybody watched Kansas City's first game, Patrick Mahomes did not look good. 
So possibly Alex Smith getting out of Kansas City was probably the best thing for him, getting away from Andy Reid, who is not a quarterback whisperer, but he is a quarterback destroyer. We've seen it over the years as Donovan McNabb. Um, With that being said, the Washington Redskins, I believe there will be a a two-team race at the top of this division, and both teams, I believe, will have the same record. And when I say their record at this one, James will understand the other team because I already said who was going to win this division. So I fully agree with you. Um, Alex Smith is probably their biggest – I think their biggest quarterback uh, thing. Now, eh, all right, so Jay Gruden was the offensive coordinator in uh, Cincinnati before he came to uh, Washington. See – should probably put Washington. Yeah, we don't call them the Redskins. Anyways. Um, yes, they are the Redskins. Be offended. I'm not offended. I'm half black, half Puerto Rican. Anyways. While you talk, I'm going to go get a drink. Fair deal, sir. Thank you. Look at my Patriots helmet back there. <laughs> See how we do this? When we do these broadcasts. I'm not biased. This, this is realism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have like assistants. We don't have, uh, you know, directors, uh, producers, nothing like that. We just do this on our own, on our own free will, inside the wondrous uh, space of our own houses. So, uh, Alex Smith is that prototypical quarterback that Gray, J- I said Gray Juden, Jay Gruden wanted. Uh, Andy Dalton has a nice little scramble. Uh, Andy Dalton's pretty accurate, but for the most part, he's not clutch, right? So. Alex Smith, for the most part, is clutch. He's he's developed a clutch trait almost, except when it comes to playoff games. Um, Alex Smith is pretty clutch, clutch in regular season games. As a matter of fact, uh, he has like I think five comeback from behind victories over the last two years. Uh, he's what uh, Jay Gruden really wanted in a quarterback, and who knew that this was going to happen? Right? Who knew that this was going to fall right onto uh, their lap? Probably Jay Gruden because Alex Smith has been saying, I think said uh, halfway through last year that he said he wasn't going to end up being in Kansas City anymore. Uh, that he said the writing was on the wall. Uh, they're adamant uh, to going with the quarterback. I cannot. I I told this is like day number three. I cannot remember this guy's that's name. Mahomes. Mahomes. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. Uh, but. Because his career is going to be forgettable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know he still has not thrown a touchdown in practice? Well, he was ass in that first preseason game, too. So, yep. And I can't wait to talk about the West because I, I have so much to say about that. Um, but, anyways, so to me, it seemed like Kansas City, Kansas City is going to dial it in as, as the team that's not going to go to the playoffs by giving up. Alex Smith, um, they decided to go into a development phase. So Alex Smith went to a team that they put some really solid pieces behind them, and they were some really solid pieces until two of them got hurt. Um, I'm talking about Darius Geis. He's out for the season. Uh, Manasseh Gardner, he's out for the season. Uh, and then this is what they have on their schedule. The Packers, the, the, these are notable games. The Packers, the Saints, the Panthers, the Falcons, the Texans, and the Eagles. Uh, and that's outside of the division games, which are all going to be pivotal pivotal to what they do uh, and where they place this season. So with that said, Big Sin, what do you have as their, uh, their, their record this year? You're going to write down this record next to the Redskins and the Giants. Okay. I believe it's going to be 11-5 and five for both 11 teams. 11 and 5. I write that down 11 and 5. All right. So now let's get to them cowboy. Hey, boy, y'all going to stand up. Y'all ain't going to play in the NFL. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you'll stand for the anthem, boy, and you're going to lock it. It's that, that's what that's the, like that's, said, the that's the new. Roger, 
Roger Goodell sit behind the scene like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> I swear, Jerry Jones don't listen to nobody for nothing, boy. Um, or, his kids, or his kids don't listen to nobody for nothing. I'm telling you, with an active lawsuit going on, going against the same exact thing, right? There's an active fucking lawsuit. And then the first thing you say is, you're going to stand for this anthem, boy. Oh, okay. All right, cool. And, and oh, by the way, keep in mind that Jerry Jones was dispoed, uh, with, was dep- with disposition, a deposition, whatever the fuck they want to call it, um, disposed, or deposed, or whatever. Deposed. Uh, and apparently, he, he had several conversations. He fire. Yeah, he had several conversations with uh, Donald Trump about the anthem thing, but public record would not know what they what 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 those uh, questions or answers were. Only what happened in the courtroom; those cannot be made public. I can, t- I can, can tell you. I can. I can probably tell you what word was thrown around more than once. What? It begins with an N, and don't end with an A. It ends with the pirates' very favorite saying, "R." Yeah, I, I. I believe it. I believe it. Um, and uh, poor, <laughs> poor, poor Dak Prescott. We know why he's gonna stand for the anthem. You know, you, you, if, if did you see that fight? Uh, that they showed the video of when he was a sophomore or junior in college. He was down in Florida, and then he got his ass whooped. He ain't gonna stand for the he ain't gonna stand for the anthem because he got beat up by his own kind. <laughs> he ain't got no remorse. Okay, the Dallas Cowboys. Their season hinges hinges on Ezekiel Elliott making it through the season. Yeah, because we saw last year. Without Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott ain't shit. Horrible. Um, on top of that, I mean, the 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 only notable uh thing with the Cowboys that they lost Des Bryant and Jason. Well, Jason Witten retired. That was it. Um, but their notable games. Hold on, that tells you something right there about the Cowboys this season. Yeah. Their longest term. Most notable player in franchise history. More notable than Emmitt Smith. More notable than fucking Troy Aikman. More notable than fucking Mike Orvin. The fucking tight end. Yep. This man looked at this team. He's completely healthy and said, you know what? I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He's out there lifting weights and shit. Probably doing some curls. You know what I'm saying? Probably yeah. doing some press. After the season, hold on. He's like he's in the best physical shape of his life. He's looking himself in the mirror, feeling himself, and he's like, and he probably sees like Dak Prescott walking behind him, and he's like, "I'm good. I I, I don't think yeah. I can do this anymore." Yeah. To text him and let him not To, but but he's kind of like To. Fucking ah, uh, <laughs> all my talking about. There's Brian, sir. Then Brian texted him and was like, hey, dog, I'm I, I'm not staying in Dallas. Uh, Jason Witten was going to end up being the number one receiver. Fuck this was, shit on out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we good over here. I'm good, love, and joy. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm go join my boy, to- my boy Tony and do commentary. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. The Tony and Jason show, god damn it. So <laughs> – you know, normally I, I notate what uh what teams I've been on so slow on this. This is why I need a producer. I keep forgetting to click the button at the bottom. Um so notable teams, ladies and gentlemen. You know what the notable teams are that, that they have to play? Every Giants, single Giants. every single last one of them. So w- without further ado, um, we have some we have some new technology. I can bring up a third screen. You see that third? Hold on, wait. I'm bringing it up. Give me a second. Uh, Cowboys, go go back. Cowboys, where are you, Cowboys? Cowboys hiding like the, hiding like most of the team will be this year. Probably. I mean, I'll pull up the whole entire schedule for for the fans at home to see. Uh, where are we at? Well, I'm in Vegas. You're in Florida. I don't know where everybody else is. Look at this. We'll talk in the background. Look at this, everybody. Uh, the first 
five uh, schedule. I mean, the first game's on this thing. Panthers, Giants, Seahawks, Lions, Texans, Jaguars, Redskins, Titans, Falcons, Redskins, Saints, Eagles, Cowboys, Bucks, and Giants. Cowboys are going four and twelve this year. I like. I want to believe that, and and I like. I really want to believe that, sir. I I really want to believe that. I don't see it. I don't care how good their running game is. They still have to go out and stop these teams from scoring. <laughs> I mean, no matter no matter how good no matter how good the Dak Prescott Ezekiel Elliott show is, they have to stop these teams from scoring in football games. Okay, not on Madden, not in fantasy football, real actual life football. And I don't think that the Cowboys can do it. So this is what I have them as. You say you say four and twelve. Yeah. I have them at one and fifteen. I do. I'm sorry. I do. I have them at one and fifteen. I was literally looking here. I, we just saw every single game. You you we just seen the schedule, right? <laughs> the only team that I foresee these te- these people beating are the Bucks. Because I don't think the Bucks are good enough. But they can't beat the Eagles twice. They're not beating the, the, the newfound Giants and because they can't beat the Giants. Um, the Colts, okay, maybe the Colts. But if Andrew Luck is playing, anything's possible. Okay. The reason I said 4-12 and 12 is because they seem to always go 1-1 one and one against their division. So I gave them those three wins and the game against the Buccaneers. I still don't see it. I still don't see them beating the Eagles twice. Even as as much quarterback controversy is going to come, I don't see them beating the Eagles twice. And I'm going to get let's get to the Giants cuz we, we got to really talk about that. Let's get to the Giants now. The Giants, the I said this and I preached Remember I I preached this for the last 2 years. I said, "Phil, oh thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. Look at that. Look at that for brother. Appreciate it." <laughs> That's real life. That's teamwork. work. Makes the dream work. <laughs> Anyways, so I've said this for the last three, three, two years, three years, two years, three years, somewhere around there, right? I said, Big Sim, I said, if the Giants had a running back where they were actually convinced that they were actually going to run the ball, the Giants would be the most dangerous team in the NFL. Lo and fucking behold, they draft Saquon fucking Barkley. Whose Probably. thighs are as big as our heads. Yes. I mean, it's calves. Never mind. Not his thighs. It's calves. We have calves as big as our heads. Thighs as big as probably half of our bodies. Um, and he can cut on a dime. And he can, the dude is a physical specimen. This man got oh, – he had like four carries, and I think he ended up with like 30 yards in the, in the preseason game. He only, he only had four or five carries, ended up with 30 yards. Yeah, but then it was the Baker Mayfield show, and that's why the Browns won. Yeah, well – I mean, I wouldn't want to have Saquon Barkley injured either. Um, I'll take that L. Shit, I'll give a yeah, fuck. Because, because I remember the Browns do have Gerard Mayo, who likes to hit running backs really low. Exactly. In New England. Exactly. So <clears throat> the 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 running game is going to be key. If they can consistently run the ball this year and give Eli Manning time to be Eli Manning, I think we're looking at more than just a playoff team. I think that we're looking at probably at least the next number one team in the in the NFC. And which is with the reason I gave earlier why I believe either them or the Redskins will win this division. Yeah. Um, Odell Beckham is playing for an NBA contract. Yep. Um, Nate Solder was a staple of the Patriots offensive line for the last seven years. 
he'll be able to block for Eli Manning better than fucking Flowers did last year. Of course, I could take this little pack of Gogurt, put it on the offensive line for the Giants, and he would have been better than fucking Flowers. Yeah, that, that's, that's 100 100 right there. Um, and people got to remember, they still got Shane Vereen back there in the backfield with Saquon Barkley now. Yeah. Shane Vereen is a playmaker. Um, yeah. The Giants' defense is still good. <laughs> All around, they are still decent. Yeah. Eli Manning, yes, he's coming up on the end of his career. But, and this this is something that made me laugh the other day. NFL insiders are talking about who would they put, who would they vote first for the Hall of Fame between Philip Rivers and Eli Manning. And they picked Philip Rivers over Eli Manning. Yeah. Yeah. And that to me is sad because what has Philip Rivers done? Oddly enough, ever since that one, the the last time that the that the Chargers <laughs> had a shot at a Super Bowl, that was the last time Philip Rivers was relevant. Did you ever th- stop to think about that for a second? Yeah, the year that the the year the Patriots made with Damian Tomlinson cry. Yeah. And oddly enough, wasn't that uh, – it was either Norv Turner's last year or, or uh, Schottenheimer's last year. Or he Schottenheimer's last year. Yeah. Where... Remember Thomas sat on the sideline crying in his helmet and he refused to take his helmet off because of what the Patriots did to that team. Yep. Yep. I mean, you think about that. About a quarterback who you're talking about not going into the Hall of Fame who beat an undefeated Patriots team on the biggest stage there was. Yep. Not only beat them when they were undefeated, also beat them a second time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There ain't no lies. There ain't no lies. It's all truth right there. I feel about the Giants the same way that this man on the, on the other end of me feels about the Cowboys. Yeah. I hate them. I hate them. Except, and but... I am telling you, they are either going to win the a- NFC East outright or be tied with the Redskins to win the NFC East. Yep. And I think at that point, we're going to have to look at. Uh, and if you get Odell Beckham in the playoffs, Lord help anybody else in the NFC. Oh, God, yeah. That, that, that's a wrap. I mean, the Giants have proven that they can do their thing in the playoffs. I mean, they, they lost that game to, uh, what was it? It was, um, was it Green Bay? Yeah. That miracle game? Beckham, yeah. Beckham was playing her. Yep. So I don't know, but like Beckham has yet to have a legitimate playoff game. If 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 Saquon Barkley performs like like he has been in practices and preseason, and, and that translates to the regular season, the Giants are the most dangerous team in the NFC. I don't really think that that, that there there is any question after that. Um, they could they could run the table with just Beckham and Saquon Barkley doing their thing because Eli Manning's the quarterback's quarterback, regardless of how people personally feel about him. The man has stayed healthy. He's not like his brother. He stayed healthy and he stayed upright. Yeah, we got we got to look at it this way. People need to understand something about Eli Manning. Last year, he broke Brett Favre's consecutive start record. Yep. Before getting injured. Well, he didn't even get injured. They took him out the game because oh, yeah, the no, they him for no fucking reason. And they brought him back in the second half because the backup quarterback was ass boo boo garbage. Yep. Yep. And that, and that's why old boy lost his job. And now we're and we're sitting there saying Philip Rivers over Eli for the Hall of Fame. I hate Eli Manning, and I'm just gonna sit here and tell you flat out, fuck you. Yeah. Eli Manning has the way better resume. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. His resume is a lot more padded. Than uh than your boys than your you boys know what's sitting here even saying this right now is hurting my stomach literally. I'll be mad too. I'll be mad as fuck. But you we said I I agree with you eleven and five maybe even twelve and four, but yeah. eleven and five it's seems be, like it's gonna be around that area. Yeah, that seems right about right. It, as long as Saquon Barkley holds up his end of the deal, eleven and five. Stay four, healthy all year. Yep. They will be just fine. Yep. Yep. So we have right, our so, prediction. So give me a rundown of what I predicted for each division for both divisions. 
All right, let's go back into the notes. Notes. I so want to hear you. You have the Patriots at 13 and 3. I have the Patriots at 14 and 2. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Edit, edit, fucker. <laughs> 14 and 2. So you said 13 and 3, 14 and 2. I have. Uh, you have the Dolphins at 5 and 11. I have them at 6 and 10. The Jets, you have at 6 and 10. I actually have as 8 and 8. And then the Bills, you have at 9 and 7. I have at 5 and 11. Now, the NFC East, uh, you have the Eagles at 7 and 9. I have them at 9 and 7, but still missing the playoffs. I have uh, the Redskins, we both agreed, 11 and 5. Uh, the uh, the Cowboys, you have at four and twelve. I have at one and fifteen. <laughs> and Larry, hope, I hope Larry Elam watches this video. I hope so too. Make sure you tag him in this post to watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, I have we have the Giants both at eleven and five, possibly even twelve and four. That is our breakdown of what is going to be coming up a seriously wonderful NFL season. Now, is there anything else, Mr. Sin, that you'd like to add before we go into the ending? Um, da, 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 da. No, I think we got everything out of our system for this first episode. All right. So next Saturday, um, possibly. And actually, no. Friday. Are you afraid? Are you free Friday night? I should be. I won't know until Friday. Okay. Or even Friday in the daytime because I'm off Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I won't be. I know I won't be available Friday in the daytime because that's not my schedule. So. All right. Well, I'm I'm not going to be available Saturday, but so I'm trying to get this done early. So. Uh, trying to do a Friday evening. We'll, we'll we'll shoot for Friday. If we got to do it at night, we got to do it at night. Get some get, get some of the night people involved, but we have a. Uh, Next week, we we're talking about the NFC and AFC North. Uh, Unless we want to do it at 5 a.m. Friday morning, I can do that. Oh, is that early on my day off? Okay, fine. I can do that. 5 a.m. So your time, five time or my time? 5 a.m. my time. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So. I'm like, well, you know what I say? <laughs> Make some fucked up predictions like the damn uh the Bears going sixteen and zero half sleep and shit. The Bears are gonna go sixteen and zero, and so are the Packers. What? What? <laughs> Minnesota's gonna win the division. Fifteen zero and two. No, fourteen zero and two. <laughs> no, I just said Minnesota, and Chicago, are both gonna go sixteen and zero, and Minnesota's gonna win the division. What? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, so stay tuned next for week? next week. Stay tuned for next week. We are going to be uh, live again once again on Facebook, both you covering both North? coasts, but we're going to be on the, the AFC, NFC North. Uh, this video is also going to be going on YouTube. Uh, you're actually going to be catching us. This is, I think I informed Big Sin that this is actually our first ever podcast that this is going to be live. On anchor.com, which is also going to distribute to podcast uh, stations worldwide. So, overtime sports and what? simple black, simple black and the podcast channel. What the fuck? Yes, right. We're going world fucking wide. <laughs> the, the, the local is not big enough. YouTube is not big enough. Facebook is not big enough. We're going worldwide. That's right. Hey, world slide. <laughs> So, uh, as I make these uh, endings, I haven't did one of these uh, endings in a minute, so I think I clear my throat for a second. <clears throat> all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you very much for watching Sinful Black Entertainment's Overtime Sports Show. This 
NFL preview special where we covered the AFC and NFC East divisions. Uh, if you like what you hear and you enjoy hearing us do what we do on a weekly basis, sometimes even daily when we really get down to it, we need y'all to go ahead and do two things. First thing, we need you to like the videos, hit the thumbs up on, on, on the videos on Facebook. Make sure you also uh, like in uh, the videos on YouTube as well. Secondly, make sure that you subscribe. Subscribe to the Sinful Black Entertainment uh, show, uh, the, 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 the Facebook page. Make sure you subscribe to the Sinful Black page on uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, everywhere Twitter. where you... Uh huh? Twitter. The Twitter machine, yes. Follow and us the at the Snapchat, Twitter machine. In the, Snapchat, in the Snapchat we've been waiting for six months for. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it, okay? I'm trying, okay? This, the things you said that three rough. months ago. Yes, I know. I've I've gone busy. I promise that is actually a thing that I that I've been working on. I'm just trying to find the best way to deliver Snapchat content. And thanks to uh Samsung, oddly enough, I could have more than one Snapchat profile on my phone, which means I'll be able to run Snapchat on both uh uh the my actual profile and for Simple Black Entertainment once we get it up and running. So I'm gonna see how that goes. Other than that. I got something other than that. Yes, what you got other than that, sir? The gaming videos. I've done so far two We Happy Few videos, um, both early in the mornings. My Cleveland Browns Road to the Super Bowl starts tonight, live on Sinful Black Entertainment. Oh, yes. And next weekend, sometime, hopefully, once Mr. Black actually gets Madden, we'll have our yearly Madden Rivalry Series Classic. I have Madden coming into my hands. Blessed be thy Lord on Tuesday. You know uh, what I want to do this year? I, I, want, I want to challenge you to something. Okay. The Sinful Black Madden Tournament. We both choose four teams. An eight-bracket tournament between us. Oh, Lord. You down? I'm down. All right. Let's do it. I'm Number down one team. And the number two seeds will be our teams, respectively. Since my team had the better record last year, the Patriots will be the number one seed, and the 49ers will be the number two. And then we'll rank the other teams set three through seven. Okay. And that we'll works. set it up like, like a basketball playoff bracket. All one right. Eight. All right. Yep. We shall do it. That'll work for me. So that means we have to bring our game so we're not using the other person's team later on in the playoffs. True. True. <laughs> Very true. All right. So, so, so one of us could one of us could theoretically be eliminated before the finals even happens. That would be sad. <laughs> <laughs> you will stay and you will like it. You better right? win. <laughs> you will use my team to bring me my championship. I am Jerry Jones. You will not kneel, boy. You will stand for the anthem. Do you understand me? Uh, uh, I'm going to the Niners. Anyway, Bill Belichick don't make us do shit about the anthem. He don't give a fuck. As long as we win, he don't care. <laughs> Look at that. He don't give a fuck about your kneeling. Just play the goddamn game. Fuck. Oh. As long as when you're kneeling, you don't blow a ligament, we're fine. Okay. As long as you don't disappoint him, but for all of 37 seconds, then you're fine. <laughs> anyway, I am Big Sin. That on the other side of the mic is Hollywood. 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 Jay That's right. And the reason we go live is because, like our boy over Lucha Underground, the champion, we have zero miedo, zero fear. That's right. We are out this bitch. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>